Hello and welcome to episode 39 of Fergo and the Freak. I'm that bloke from Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can find me on Twitter at AndrewRP. Joining me once again is League Freak, who you can find on Twitter at League Freak. How are you doing there, mate? I'm doing very well today. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, look, um, I'm, I'm fresh from a four-hour sleep, so I'm doing pretty sprightly. Nice four whole hours, huh? Yeah, solid work. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, today, after the, uh, the glorious success we had with the Ask Greenberg episode Mm. and coupled with the fact that every, every Monday Fox Sports comes out and they ask everyone to ask Kenty questions, hashtag ask Kenty. And they, they receive quite a few, few questions coming for him as in, you know, it's in the almost hundreds, I guess. Um, they then have this big thing where they ask Kenty, it's a big deal. And then when they get around to actually doing they ask him about three of them. Yeah, and, and they're, always sort of, the, they're always the softest ones too. Yeah, yeah, and he's also rather dismissive with his answers. Mm-hmm. Like so it says, ask Kenty, and he said, do you think this? He's going, no. Yeah. Okay, next one. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we feel bad for the fans. Um mm-hmm like we did with the Ask Greenberg one, and we think you deserve better. And so we're going to try and deliver you better. Yeah, and that's what we try and do on this podcast, is just be better than everyone else. And so far, I mean, we're succeeding beyond everyone's expectations. That, that That's the main bit. That last bit is the main bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Eh? <laughs> All, right. All right, so shall we get stuck into this? Yeah, I'm going to start from the very top. Okay. Um, Okay, one here says, um, talking about Paul Kent, Yeah, uh, he laid into Brandy a few weeks ago. Paul Kent, you should apologise, and what gives you the right to want game plans and strategy anyway? I think it's about origin. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, Jono's, yeah, Jono's Paul... asking for game plans. Yeah, well, they know a lot about the game. Um, I like it when they tell, like, state of origin players about the physical toll that the game takes on them. Um, yeah, I, look, I think that everyone got stuck into Brad Fittler coming into game two, and I think it was based upon, obviously, the first game loss. That's the first thing. Everyone was disappointed by that, but I think it was exacerbated by what was happening with the Mitchell Pierce stuff. And I think that when Mitchell Pierce looked like he was going to be called up, it... <sighs> It was a really bad sign for Brad Fittler. Now, Brad Fittler, at the end of the day, Mitchell Pierce didn't play. And a lot of speculation is that it was because he was injured. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of speculation was he just di- didn't, you know, want to be a part of the whole thing, which is fair that, enough. I that, think that's, that that's, that's injured with air quotes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, look, I think he would have played this week or oh, last weekend had the Knights been playing. I think um, so too. So, yeah, I, I I think that there was pressure on Brad Fittler to a certain extent, and I think it was warranted. And Fittler come up with one of the biggest wins in New South Wales history. And it just is what it is. Um, you know, I think that some of the criticism was pretty cutting. But I, at the same time, you and me, I mean, we were super critical of the idea of bringing in Mitchell Pearce and even some of the changes that he made. Um so, yeah, I, I can't be too critical about anything that Kent said. I, I don't watch this show that is on all that often, so I don't know exactly what he was saying, but I think that the the general criticism of, of Brad Fittler was warranted and Fittler answered it. Exactly, certainly did. Um, yeah, and look, everyone everyone had a dig at the team over what the, what happened because it had that consistent trend of what had happened for years, decades in the past of, shit, we just lost the game, pick panic, pick a new team. And more often than not, New South Wales fans have seen that lead to another loss and a serious loss. And that's where that panic and that criticism come from. So yeah. I will defend Kent in, in some degree here. Um, you know, because this became part of the routine. And yeah, so and, he just delved into it once again. And this wasn't even an immediate thing. Like, this is fact-based. This is what had happened so often many times before. So it, you can't even have a game about just being some media talk or bullshit like that. It was just 
he was just doing what every other fan had felt at the same time, just criticising for making such a big heap of changes. Yeah, and I think that uh, doing that and, and then you chuck the Pierce stuff on top, and like we saw the exact same thing with Laurie Daly, and we saw how that turned out. And as you say, this is all based on history. Like this isn't s- happening in a vacuum. This is based on a lot of history and a lot of losing history and a lot of mistakes. And I think that people saw a lot of patterns in what was happening and they were really, really concerned and, and quite honestly pissed off about it because how many times are you going to make the same mistakes and expect a different result? Exactly. Um, next question here comes from someone called Rodney. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> when will the NRL do something about Maguire? I, uh, look, I don't think there's anything that needs to be done with Maguire. Like, if he does something dirty, penalise him. I was shocked that there was uh, a big blow-up about anything that Maguire was doing in tackles in State of Origin 2. Like, I didn't really see him do anything over the top. Uh, there were tackles that he did on uh, Maloney when he was kicking and stuff that I mean, there was one ones that were fine by me. I didn't think there was anything wrong with them. Um, yeah, if he does something wrong, penalise him. But outside of that, I mean, what do people want? I think what people want, and this is an idea I've just had, and I think people agree with it. If someone does a grubby act to another player, the victim of said grubby act should be allowed to punch the uh, the gr- the grubby act person. So if Maguire goes out and he pulls someone's hair, he yep. should be allowed to get hit once. Just right in the nose. Just bang, anywhere you want. Just give him one hit and just and then that's <laughs> it, move on. Can you imagine if rugby league turned into that where the referee blows them up, calls the two players in, and everyone just turns it get, comes around in a circle and he says, You get one shot, okay? <laughs> Gotta be above the chin, below the forehead. Okay, and just someone like Maloney just winds up, bang! And then we all go back to our, you know... We yeah. Can, we can even clean up Maguire, let the trainer come out, fix his nose a little bit, give him yeah. the Hannibal Lecter look, and then we just play on. Go <laughs> play footy. Yeah, that'd be cool. It'd be great for spectators, and it'd probably lead to a reduction in the amount of grubby incidents going on in the field. Do you reckon that it could lead to, like, you know how you see um, some sports and they their shit, so they have to cut their sport down into the littlest package you can get. I'm thinking about Rugby Union 7s here. I'm thinking about AFLX. Do you reckon, like, in 100 years from now, Rugby League might just turn into a contest where you've got these little stadiums where it's just two players just going bang right in each other's face, and whoever's nose bleeds the most, they they end up uh, losing the contest, and that's what Rugby League ends up being. It's like Rugby League X. Rugby League X, it's um, it, it would lead to a new form of grubby tactic because then you'd be trying to do a grubby incident on someone mm. where you limit the power of their punch. Yeah. So it, it takes the grubbiness to a new level. Maybe, it, it, and then like cheating, you could have people and then it's like, oh my God, did you hear that player XYZ had a silicon implant in his nose? Oh, <laughs> What? Holy crap. Blow. Yeah, or then you get people going the other way because, you know, there'd be experimentation. It's like, oh, did you hear what's happening? It's like he, he got carbon fibre, replaced his whole nose with carbon fibre, and, yeah, yeah, he broke his hand when he punched him. He won by default. I hear they're going to outlaw that sort of thing. Um, and then you'd get others that would just, you know, they'd have to get rid of things like uh, needles so that people didn't come into the the contest, and they were just full of lidocaine. They couldn't feel their face at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. I, I think that this is something we've just given, stumbled on here. Given that I've sprung this on you very briefly, just there like that, you seem to yeah. be very, very well versed in how this is going to play out. <laughs> From our draw, we know how to break a nose. There we go. We know how um, it all works. <laughs> Ask Kenty, Paul, do you think the Maroons got looked after by Sutton in the ruck? I'd say no. No, I didn't see anything in the game where I was like, oh, this is favouring. I just think it was... I think if Queensland got looked after in the ruck, the scoreline would have been a fair bit closer than it was. Yeah. I'm always shocked by things like that when people say, oh, do you reckon the referee helped this team? And it's like, they just got smacked. What are you talking about? 
Okay, here's one where someone's asking Kenty about one of the game's rules. Yeah, oh, wow. He's pretty so, pretty up on the rules, especially yeah. the interchange ones. So I'm not surprised that he skipped over this one. Mm. What happens if there is no dummy half for the tackle player to play the ball to? I, the support players have not reached the tackle player and the tackler has quickly moved into the position of marker. Well, what happens then if he plays the ball... The ball's live once it touches the player's foot, I believe, which means the marker can then duck around behind him and fall on it. Yeah, and grab the ball. I'm trying to think. I, I can't... The markers have of, to be square, though. Yeah, and look, I can't think of... And I guess this is coming down to a little bit of the rule book versus the reality of what we see on the field. Um, I can't think of a rule that says that a player must play the ball within a set time frame. Like... I, I think that you're allowed to just wait until you've got a dummy half. Mm. Um, I'm sh- there might be something in the rule book about it, but I I can't think of any rule like that. Like you just wait till someone's there. The only time that this would really be a problem is if number one, if your players were like the laziest bastards on earth, and they just <laughs> they're at the other end of the field or something, um, or like. They're all injured. It's just I, I understand it. It's an interesting question, but I thought so. If you get a player who makes a big break down the field, like a Josh Addo Carr, yeah, and he's so much faster than everybody else that by the time he's the tackle's completed, because the defenders get off him really fast, he stands up and he's got to play the ball, and there's no one around. But I think even in those situations, he's allowed to stand there and hold the ball until someone arrives. So yeah, yeah. Which makes makes you think about like at the end of games when the time is running down. And yeah, why, don't, why don't they just hold the ball? <laughs> yeah, just stand the there. Just, yeah. yeah, if you just stood, I'd love a player to just stand there and look at the referee, and just it's a standoff and see how long it takes him to penalise him. <laughs> it's like do it, do it. I'm not playing this ball. Maybe okay. Here's the deal, right? If there's an NRL player listening right now, I, this, I guess this might lead into some a little bit of match-fixing grey area, but (laughs) if there's a a player listening right now, okay, and you're up by a lot of points, so it doesn't matter, get to the end of the game, and when you're going to play the ball, just stand there and make the referee penalise you and see how long you get off the clock because it might actually be worth it. And the referee might actually have to say to the opposition players, dude, I can't penalise him. This is all in the rules. He's allowed to stand there for as long as he likes. But then what happens if we get to a point where a team scores in the first 30 minutes of a match, right? Then the kickoff comes and they just get tackled, first hit up, and then they just stand there for like 38 and a half minutes. (laughs) We're all just standing around and sort of talking and stuff. That'd be great. This is another sport. This is is rugby league Y. We've got Rugby League X. I'm going for Rugby League Y here. Yeah, it's very much Y. Yeah, and a very much like a Y. <laughs> yeah. Y with a question mark. Yeah. Um, okay, here's another one here. Um, I think they will stick with Wade at six, but Freddie likes replacing players with a similar player. Does this possibly give Chad Townsend a chance to partner Jimmy Maloney? They have won a comp together. And... I think that this is a very real possibility. I'm not saying that I think it's going to happen, but I think that is probably um, plan B. Yeah, I, I would I agree. Think, I think Townsend as halfback is plan B. I think plan A will be looking at um, Maloney at seven and Graham at six. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that uh, I reckon Townsville, uh, Townsville, I reckon Townsend will be in the squad, because it's in Sydney, that might not be publicised too much, but I wouldn't be shocked to see him there around the squad, um, maybe training with them a little bit. Another uh, option, I guess, would be to bring Whiten into six, given he's played there all year and he's played bloody well there. He has played very well there. Uh, he, he's more of a ball He's more of a ball runner, though. I think uh, the thing about Graham is that he's got, he's got a little bit of that passing game in him and he's really good at it. Mm. I, you know, if I'm Brad Fittler, I just look at how they went in the second half. And this, like, they were playing great with Cleary in there. I thought Cleary had a fantastic first half of footy. Um, yeah, that was his that was his best game so far in our, in the Origin Arena. Yeah, that, that yeah. That first half, phenomenal. You know, yeah. his defence, too, was... I mean, it's always been good, but it was outstanding in that first half. 
and his 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 work rate too in terms of he just didn't stop. And that's one of the things that people miss about Cleary. He's, he doesn't take plays off. You don't see Cleary sort of sitting back and, and being like, oh, well, he didn't put any effort in there, especially defensively. Like, he's always looking for the work. Um, but, yeah, if I'm Freddie, I, I look at how things worked in the second half, and I find it very, very, very difficult to to make any changes. But if I was going to make one, it would be Townsend and Maloney and the halves. I think that, as, as this person says, they've won a comp together. They know each other's games really well. I think Townsend would be, if they're going to make it, if they're going to bring somebody else in as a, a specialist halfback, he is the perfect person to bring in. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, this leads to another question that was asked, and that was, um, everyone is saying Wade Graham at six for game three, but what happens if Maloney gets injured? Yeah, wow, that's a great question. Wow, we'd be in a lot of trouble then. Um, yeah. You'd bring in Townsend. And that's the thing oh. that you can't you can't carry Townsend on the bench because that's pointless no. because if Maloney doesn't get injured, you've got a specialist halfback on the bench who can't really do anything in the game unless you bring him on and you move Wade to the second row. But that's just that's just mucking around with one player. Yeah, see, and it I, sort of puts a few players out. So it just seems a bit crazy that idea. So, but it's a very good question that needs to be considered, I guess. Maybe, maybe Cook can play half back, but then you need a nine. But that's not as hard a job, I guess. Yeah, I, it's hard. I mean, I, see, I don't think Graham would be able to properly guide your team around the field. It's just not his game. No, that's that's a really good question. Um, and it's one that I guess Fittler's going to have to look at. I mean, who would you have? Is there a utility you can think of that would be able to come in and at a stretch play halfback? Well, someone else asked, would oh, it be man. worthwhile picking Latrell Mitchell on the bench as a utility? I don't mm. know if he'd be able to cover halfback. No. Um, but... It's it's hard to find utilities who could do that. The other one would be probably he's not in the form though. Is Tyrone Peachy? He's played in the halves a fair bit. Yeah, he um, could probably do it. Hey, at a stretch. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing. Like with everyone, it's like oh, I mean, he's probably the best option there was, that you've come up with, and he's it's like oh, I guess maybe he could do it. There was someone who has played for New South Wales in the past who hmm. played in a played in an international match on the weekend, mm-hmm. and he plays at hooker at club level mm-hmm. and only ever played at hooker in origin, but played at halfback in an international on the weekend who they could bring in. Oh, geez, who are you talking? I've, I've got, I'm, I'm blank. Who? Robbie Farah. Damn. I tell you what. <laughs> it's it's crazy. He just, you know what? He just retired from rep footy. But I think he would do it. I think if he got asked, he'd say yes. Yeah, I reckon Robbie, you know what? That is crazy good. Holy crap. He'd be perfect for it. He could definitely play at like halfback. He could definitely do that. No no question about that. Um, he'd be great to bring off the bench if you're going to go that way. Although I think, Cook, you don't really have to worry about that sort of thing. But... No, Barrett does have pretty good defence in the middle. Yeah. Um, so you could even bring him on and play him at, at centre or something like that if you wanted to, um, just for his defence in the defensive line. And he'd be able to link up good with the with the outside man. He wouldn't be he wouldn't be trying to hog the ball, so he'd be getting the ball to the, the speedy man pretty quickly out there because he's got no pace in him whatsoever when it comes to open play running. Yeah, I tell you what, though, as an outside <laughs> back, if I see Robbie Farrell lining up against me, I am just... I am dead set rock hard. I'm just screaming, get me the fucking ball. You know, <laughs> it's, I, you know, and, and that's, I but think it's Robbie Farrick. We say that's get, pretty fair, you know. <laughs> we have to consider these options because we don't want to see the 19th man or 18th man of us getting put into the position of being the bench utility. Yeah, yeah. I, look. I think, he whose name should not be mentioned in this episode yeah, well, with any luck. He will not. How <laughs> dare he? I, I, you know what? I just thought, I thought of two players. 
sort of two players. Yeah. They paid a they pl- paid a lot of money though. This already sounds bad. Yeah, <laughs> they paid. They're probably what am I talking about? Probably they paid overs. Okay, and one of them, some talk that he might be New South Wales's Wally Lewis. Do you know where, where I'm going? With this? Where is where is his focus though? I'm not talking about him. I'm talking Thank about the you. other guy. I'm talking about the other guy. Can you from the same him? team? Yeah. <laughs> he whose yeah. name should not be mentioned. Ah, uh, let's not mention their names. Yeah. Um, did we? We didn't really answer that question, though, did we? <laughs> well, no, we kind of did. Yeah, We'd... Robbie Farrer. <laughs> uh, Chad Townsend. Yeah. Chad yeah. Townsend comes in. You know what? I, I reckon you could do Chad Chad Townsend comes in if, if say, Maloney gets injured coming into game three, bring in Townsend, that's pretty straightforward. And I'd just keep Graham outside of him. Yeah. Um, but in terms of in-game situations, I also think that at some point you just got to be like, listen, if that happens, we've got to just make do. You know, so... Well, see, the thing is, Townsend and Maloney have played a fair bit together. Um Townsend, though, he looks to be, I mean, I know he's not 30, but yeah. um, he's in the form of his life right now. And he's he's <laughs> playing very calm and very controlled football. He's making a lot of good decisions on the field as well. Um, yeah, so imagine, geez, when imagine when he's going to get to prime. Yeah, imagine when he gets to 30. Oh, it'll be yeah. fantastic. Look out, Thurston. Yeah. Um, so we've got another one here. This is from R Singh 101 and he said to ask Kenty, why do you suck at eating the humble pie? Greg Alexander was expecting it. Uh, now, if Brandy was on this show, I kind of wished I'd watched it because Brandy doesn't give a fuck. He'll say whatever he wants on these shows because he's Brandy. He's yeah, like they, a... they, they interviewed Brandy. Um, they had a long, a long interview with Kevin Walters, and every time Kevin Walters is on that show, not as the Maroons coach, yeah, he's he's like a kid that's been drinking red cordial out of the bottle straight. Yeah, I love him. He's so he, good. He's all pumped up and excited and everything. And last night he was on there like he just found out that someone had run over his favorite dog. Oh really? Yeah. So oh yeah, we didn't do good. Enough. Mumbling, bubbling. You think what the hell are you doing? <laughs> wow, crazy. And then they that's went went to Brandy. Brandy always looks funny wearing the um. So he always looks funny to me whenever he's wearing the the relaxed team, you know, tracksuit gear and the the cap. Yeah, yeah. He just looks like you know, like when a forty year old puts a cap on backwards to try and look cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, At some point, you get too old to wear fucking gear. You know, yeah, just Brandy, just put on a suit, mate. You just look you look more comfortable in a suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a that's a compliment, you know. Exactly. Brandy pulls off a suit. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's. I love I love I love Greg Alexander. Greg Alexander is oh. part of my family. He's just, and I'm not literally part of my family, but he, anybody that lives in Western Sydney, you know, west of about Seven Hills, Greg Alexander is part of your family. So, One of my absolute three favorite players of all time from mm. from a, from my childhood. Um, gotta love watching him play. I would seriously, if I met Greg Alexander, I would probably tear up. I've never met him, but I would just get I'd fan girl so hard meeting Greg Alexander. Yeah, he was he was he was doing Craig Wing stuff before Craig Wing was around. Yeah, yeah. and like as we've talked about, uh, one of the highest rated uh, junior rugby league players ever. A lot of people still say he's the best one they've ever seen. And so versatile and just oh, so good, just a superstar. Can you imagine if he? hit the scene now, like, people would be like, what the hell's going on with this guy? He can do everything. Yeah. Be so good. Ah, love Brandy. Well, you'd almost say, I mean, the only person that comes close to him, and he doesn't yet because of the lack of versatility, is Caelan Ponga. Yeah, I was thinking that too, hey. Like, that ability where he can play in the backs and he could be a good half. I think Brandy probably had, had more of the halfback, um, I guess you'd call them instincts or 
yeah. the the knowledge to play half back. I guess he he has that more than Ponga, but, but yeah, is, he's similar he sort to of player. he adapted to two you know one massive change in the game, and that was um, the five meter rule going to the ten meter rule. Yeah, and he adapted to that and played brilliantly under both. Yeah, and in several positions at fullback at at halfback. Um, he, sometimes he played on the wing. How many? Think about that. Worse. How many halves, right, from the five meter era, also were very, very good in the ten meter era? Like off yeah. the top of my head, Alan Langer, um, and Brandy, uh, yeah. Gary Freeman. Gary Freeman definitely won. Yeah. Um, who else? I mean, there was a bit of a changing at the guard. That was a natural changing at the guard at that time. I guess somebody like a like a um, Terry Lamb, you know. Yeah. But then you're looking at halves, not. Well, that's half the thing. He, yeah, he was more of a genuine second receiver, so he still he always had that bit of extra space. But yeah, uh, Cliff Lines was another one in a similar sort of mould there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ricky yeah. Stewart didn't really get much of a chance to play under the five meter rule. I think he only did it for one, maybe two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and he blossomed under the ten meter rule. So. Yeah, Maybe it's uh yeah. It, the other thing that he did too was he also was he was also equally brilliant at fullback, and that was you you never hear of too many halfbacks who were brilliant fullbacks as well, especially ones that were playing in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, back then it was just unheard of. Yeah, absolutely unheard of. Um, you know, it, just an incredible player. Unbelievable. Now, uh, James Mooney says. I say bring a team in the West. And we're on the record of saying yes. Yes, overdue. <laughs> overdue for sure. Um, should have announced it going into game two. It should have been an announcement that was maybe made before kickoff. That would have been absolutely crazy. Like every other sport in Australia would have gone, damn. Yeah. Um, that's what they should have done. Uh, probably should have had a team there couple of years ago now. Um, they'll get there. I, I think in the next round of expansion, it's going to be Brisbane and Perth. It seems like it's lining up that way. Yep. Um, here's a funny one. Mm-hmm. Is Josh Papali past his years by date? <laughs> no. What the hell? <laughs> like, he was one of the best Queenslanders. Unbelievable. He had a really good game. Ask yourself this. If Josh Papali is on the market and your club signs him, are you excited or are you pissed off? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No club saying no to Josh Papali. Exactly. Bloke's a freaking beast. Yeah. He's um, one of the best front rowers in the game. Yeah, absolutely. I like this one. Do Queens, this is from uh, Show Me Policies, and it's, do Queensland deserve a decider after that lame performance in Perth? <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious they don't. You know, they don't deserve a decider. As I said uh, in the show we did yesterday, with the women winning the State of Origin match and New South Wales uh, levelling this series, the best Queensland can hope for is a draw over the whole State of Origin concept. So, no, the series is over. Like, just call it all off. Yeah. Yeah. It's... uh, (laughs) I can't argue with any of that. Yeah. (laughs) I think um, it, w- it would be a good idea because it would save Queensland the travel. Yeah. And we know travel can be tough. can really be. It's like, did you see the story about James Maloney? Uh, no, which one? Okay, so, <laughs> so James Maloney on the flight back from Perth, there was a journo saw him in uh, what they called cattle class because, you know, journalists are uh, absolute pricks like that. And so they're like, oh, James Maloney, all these other players, they go up to business class and first class. But James Maloney, he's back there with the punters and blah, blah, blah. And it turned out that he'd actually swapped seats with his wife. <laughs> so she got the business class seat and he went back there. And it just was, oh, it was just so funny. Fucking journalist, man. Well, speaking of journalists and flights, there was a, a funny comment last night by uh, Phil Rothfield. Yeah. And he was talking with uh, Ben Eichen, obviously, on the show there. Yeah. And he's telling this story about how he, he got the red-eye flight from, from Perth back to Sydney after Origin. Mm-hmm. And he was amazed and surprised to see that 
two Newcastle Knights players in uh, Daniel Saifidi and Kalen Ponga are on the flight. And Ben Eichen says, why? Yeah. Like, really curiously and, and surprised. Yeah. And he says, well, you know, there's no ice baths on there and they should have been in recovery. And Eichen is again is like, why? Yeah. <laughs> and Buzz says to former State of Origin player Ben Eichen, mate, you've got to consider the body contact of an Origin game. <laughs> wow, maybe he could sit down and tell Ben Eichen what it's like to play State of Origin, hey? Oh, boy. Um, all I remember after that is I can kind of shut the conversation down and went to an ad break, and I can only assume it was so he could go and punch Buzz Rothard in the face and say, <sighs> I played in it, you idiot. Yeah, yeah. He kind of knows a little bit about it. It's so weird. Oh. It, like... They they're just weirdos. <laughs> I, I'm still shaking my head over that. He's trying yeah. to tell a former Origin player about the the impacts of Origin. Of Origin, that's fantastic. <laughs> I got a really good one here. <clears throat> it's from Jade F. It says, Paul, your thoughts on Ponga's post match interview? I thought he came across as very arrogant the way he stated, and I quote, "Their winger or centre." Whoever it was played well. And then uh, they said, how did you take this? Secondly, to that, do you think Manly will keep both bros for life? So there's two pretty good questions in there. First of all, I didn't see Ponga's interview. Did you say it? No, no, no. I, I mean, I've been trained by the um, Channel 9 down here in Melbourne to turn the TV off as soon as full time is blown. Okay. Because I don't want to give any ratings to any AFL propaganda they put on after it. Yeah, um, nice. Then I realised I don't have the AFL show on here anymore, so perhaps they did broadcast something after the game here. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, as soon as it's full-time blown here, bang, turn it off. Because yeah, they always see, cut I, it off around that time anyway. I Because I jumped on, was talking to you straight after the game. Yeah. And so I ha- only had it on mute, so I didn't hear what they were all saying. Um, and then after about half an hour of State of Origin stuff, they, they had a... Um, one of those reality shows from England. It was like most embarrassing poms or something. And it was just all I saw was a bunch of people with bad teeth uh, screaming at other people on aeroplanes. Nice. Um, and I was, <laughs> I kept on wait. I kept on, I kept an eye on the TV actually, because I was waiting for the great Britain rugby league team to turn up on it, but they never did. So yeah, I, I didn't shame. hear what Pong said, but what, I mean, I've got are no they, problems. I was going to say, are they concerned about his, um, dismissive attitude towards who his opponent players were, like he didn't even mention their name. Is that what they're worried about? I think so, yeah. Because if that's the case, remember the the sideline comment the sideline comment he made after his origin debut last year. And they said, Oh mate, how was that? How'd you find that? He's going, Oh yeah, it was all right. <laughs> I think I think what we're finding with Caelan Ponga is that he's just a casual human. Yeah. And so he's just gonna say, Yeah, whoever I you know, I wasn't paying that much of attention. I just do what comes natural. Yeah, he's just yeah. he's just a sort of a freakish ability, so I don't I don't see any concern about that. Yeah, um, no problems. Do you reckon? Maybe, that, okay, Manly. Do you reckon they'll keep the brothers for life? Yes. Yeah, I do too. Although I would, and there's a story about it today. About <clears throat> I think it's in the Sydney Morning Herald about um, how much they're going to offer to the to both of them. I yeah. think Jake they said is going to be a million dollar player. And As you should. Yeah, it's hard to argue with it. I would worry about giving a million bucks to Tommy, not on his ability or what he does in the game, because it's just flat out in a vacuum, million-dollar player, easy. But the fact that he's injury-prone, so yeah. injury-prone, He's that a bit worries. fragile. Yeah. I'd, I'd be more than happy to give Tom 800. Um, yeah, I'd be happy with that. And you know what? They've got a brother in the lower grades, a called game that he did about a month and a half ago now, he's a million-dollar player that's come through. I don't yeah. know what position he'll play. I'm guessing he's built like Tom. He's a he's a slight player. Um, he, he might fill out, you never know, but he's a slight player. He's very, very much the athlete, and he's he's the one. If I was another club, and Manly's probably got him lock, locked up, but if I was another club, I'd be offering him a whack, trying to get him out of Manly. Um, because he's the next one, and he might be every bit as good as Tom is. Um, 
and I was shocked at it. It's weird because kind of like Tom, he he looks like he's too he's too slight to do what he does, but he does it, and he he does it all over the field, and he just doesn't have any problems with the physicality of the game at all. In fact, he thrives in it. Um, and yeah, the the young bloke that's coming through, I think he's going to be almost a clone of his older brother. Nice. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think at this stage, Manly doesn't really have anyone outside of the Trebojevic boys who are going to be commanding massive money. So I think they're going to have the, the space available to give them whatever they want. Yeah, I mean, the and... only other play they've got is uh, DCE that's on massive money. Yeah. But they, they'll have room for them too as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. Unless Curtis Tyrannis starts wanting more money. <laughs> I know what your nightmare is, eh? <laughs> oh, he's coming back! <laughs> uh, look, I, I'm not even hugely overly critical of, of Curtis Sirenen because he got screwed over by West Tigers' development and coaching for so long. Yeah, that he actually literally had to leave the club and learn how to play second row because West Tigers had him as yeah he came up through the juniors as a five eighth and he was a pretty bloody good one. That's where he made his first few years playing at the Tigers. He was a five eighth, mm. but you look at him and go on, he's never going to stay there. He's just too big a human to be in the halves. Yeah, but they never gave him any sort of transition period from halves to the second row. Well, like, yeah. I thought one thing they should have done is. One year, beaten reserve grade possibly even, or even in the NRL, where he played at centre. So he still gets to do ball playing, but he's also learning about the structures of what he's got to do defensively, you know, line running, things like that. And you can do it a little bit wider out and still work on your defence out there as well. And then move him into the second row. But they just went, let's just put him straight in the second row. How many halfbacks, have, well, five eights, have gone from being in the halves straight to straight to the second row and hit it off straight away, and I can only think of Wade Graham. Yeah, it's a good point. And I remember Phil Gould saying about junior players that, and this is a criticism he had of the under-18s comp or under-20s comp. It was under-18s or 20s? It was under-20s. Um, he said that they need, they need a couple of seasons, some of them, just playing against men in reserve grade like 30-year-olds and 35-year-olds, and, and, and some of them, I guess, although you don't see too many of them running around in reserve grade these days, um, just to get used to what it's like to play against men. And I think that Siren is one of those guys. And it, isn't it weird that you look at someone like Siren and then you look at someone like Bryce Cartwright and very similar skill sets, very probably very similar ages, um, and kind of have been hurt by the way they've developed as players and and maybe the advice they've got and how they've been used. And, I mean, there's a lot of the times you look at... I mean, and Bryce Cart, uh, not Yeah, Bryce Cartwright, I mean, he doesn't look like a, even close to a first-grade player at the moment and hasn't done for quite some time. And yet at one time, he was going to be a lock to play for New South Wales. Like, just... It was just bad timing that his form wasn't when we were picking a New South Wales team. Um, it's strange when you look at the two of them and how their careers have gone and the skills that they have as second rowers. And, yeah, I mean, Curtis you know, has kicked that, on the, very well at Manly, so it's, it hasn't been too bad there. But, yeah, I, I get what you're saying there. Yeah. Um, Curtis has looked like he's he's starting to learn the job and he's, he's rolled pretty well and he's starting to move exactly. upwards. Whereas... Yeah. Bryce looked like he had all the potential in the world, and he's just gone the other way. Yeah, and like the thing is, they're both kind of a uh, a failure of the development system and the development of two young players who both should have been probably better than they are. I mean, even even Sirenen, and he's playing all right for Manly, you know, but he probably should be further along than he is. And I wouldn't be shocked if. If down a, lot, a couple of years from now he he comes into his own a little bit as a player, um, when he turns thirty, well, it's when you it's when you hit your peak. <laughs> He's still got a few years to go to to get there, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I've been there and, and passed that already. <laughs> <laughs> um, some clown asked, what's your favourite web page at rugbyleagueproject.org? Ah, oh, what type of, what type of whore would say something like that? <laughs> what, a, what an idiot. <laughs> I yeah. reckon. I, I found the one that he would like, and it's at yeah. www.rugbyleagueproject.org slash players slash Paul dash Kent slash summary. That's the one he'd go to. That'd be his favourite page. I reckon no spoilers, but just go there and have a look. Yeah, trust me, you won't you won't find much. <laughs> it's not extensive. <laughs> well, not until you click on view and start looking at other players' records. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if you if you want to be pedantic, you can say, well, it does lead into about 20, 20, you know, twenty million other pages, but the page on its own. You, know. you can check out the uh, from from that page. You can check out the history of say, um, Parramatta winger Michael Erickson. Ooh, nice. He had a he had an extensive career. Yeah, there's also um, is there anyone here? That's... Jason Martin. Jason Martin, nice. There you go. Billy Moore. Billy Moore. Wow. Yeah. How do you get to Billy Moore? Well, you go to the uh, you go to the match that he played in. Ah, oh, okay. And this is against North Sydney. Ah, there you go. You can also check out John MacArthur. Nice. That's that's a uh, an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Because why say interesting? Uh, had a pretty long career, and he got called up to. I think he got called up to be a a like 18th player in an Origin series long after his career looked like it was done and dusted. Oh, um, really? But, but never got caught into the side. Ah, it was, damn it. It was, it was just a very odd person to call up, kind of yeah. like the person we won't mention. Yes, very, very odd. How yeah. You know what the weirdest one I think ever is? Remember that in 2003, Australia's over in Great Britain. We're fucking them up as we always do, and they call in bloody Darren Smith off the street. He's playing <laughs> over there. I think he was playing for St. Helens for a memory. They call him in off the street. He's playing test football. That was the end for Chris Anderson, man. That was it. It was all yeah. over. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Someone else has asked here, how many Origins did you play, Kenty? Uh, the answer is none. Ah, really? Okay. <laughs> um, why do Queensland have to dog shot everyone? It's Origin. That shit's going to happen. Don't, don't one... get precious about that, people. Exactly. Do- this dog shot shit. It's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Um, how can... He's one from LexCorp. Uh, how can Queensland stick with Hunt after his lack of effort playing dummy half? Well, mm. first thing you've got to remember is, A, he's a halfback. Yeah. And second one was, those Queensland forwards got decimated. Mm-hmm. And... Doesn't matter what sort of hooker you are, you're not going to perform when your forwards just can't keep moving. And the other thing is, it was pissing rain as well. Yeah, and like even Cook, who is he played really well. I'm not, I'm not having a go at him, but it it wasn't the time for halfbacks, uh, sorry, dummy halves to shine in that game too much. Um, he, you know, they haven't got Hunt there as a running dummy half, where Cook has that advantage, obviously. Um, and yeah, I think that the wet weather really, and I said this in the last episode when we reviewed Origin 2, I think the wet weather really hurt the game plan for Queensland, which is kind of weird because they knew it was going to be raining. Yeah. You know, I fully agree with you there. Soap them balls. Soap them balls. It was raining soap. (laughs) Pretty was all over it. Um, someone's asked, on a scale of one to a Paul Crawley burner account on Twitter, how was the Queensland team performance last night? <laughs> That's brilliant. That's fucking brilliant, that one. Who asked yeah. that one? Um, Bradsky73. Excellent. Well done, Bradsky73. We'll give that one a like. Um, I've got one here from Ron Misson, and it says, The Ponga versus Tedesco debate. Teddy finds a way to spark his side against the run of play to get them back into the arm wrestle with multiple carries and effort. Can Ponga become the, that type of player? 
or does he require his team to create momentum to excel? No, I think I think the 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 love fest over Ponga, and well, most of it is justified. Mm-hmm. It, it's taken the attention off Tedesco, and I think some people forget just how good Tedesco is and how much his game has advanced in the last few years, mm. and how it's still advancing. Um, I still rate Tedesco as the best fullback in in the world. Uh, See, I, I was thinking about this this morning. Um, I I still have two of us a shake ahead of him. Yeah, look, they and are it's very so close. close. It's they so are very close. close. Yeah, um, RTS like has could... better has better footwork, but I think um, Tedesco seems to be evolving his game a little bit every you know every year, yeah. and it's to the point where I think it, it caught up with RTS this season. Um, I think it's so close. You could literally, you in any order, way. you could watch one and say, "Oh, he's the best," mm-hmm. and then watch a game following that and be like, "Oh, he's the best." And it just depends who you saw last. It, they're literally that close. I think the difference I would say is, I think Tedesco has modelled a li- in the last probably eighteen months. I would say I think he's really watched the way that Billy Slater used to play and come into the back line, and he's modelled a lot of his attack that way, which I think is really good. It works perfect for his sort of style of play. Whereas I think RTS is more of a direct runner of the ball, where you get Tedesco can can cause problems running wide and and running across field. I think RTS is more of a straight runner, and that's where he causes his problems, because then he can use his footwork against bigger men um, where Tedesco kind of uses it against the outside backs when they're trying to back up and slide, and that's where he gets, that's where he causes problems. Um, on Ponga, I watched Ponga a couple of weeks ago in a game Newcastle got smashed in, um, and he was fantastic. And it was a game that Mitchell Pearce disappeared in because they weren't rolling over the top of someone, and Ponga took over the the, the playmaking role and tried everything he could to make something happen. So I don't think it it really comes down to Ponga needing others to create for him. I think that Ponga can create for others. Um, And, man, I mean, how about those... Just talking about those three as fullbacks, like, how crazy good are those three as fullbacks? Yeah. I I think Ponga's definitely in the group just behind those two, though. I mean, they are... Yeah. I mean, I probably... I reckon give him give him eighteen months and we'll be talking about the three of them. But I agree, he's behind those those two. Those two are the best. Well, then there may be some other player where I need to have a quick look at here. Um, yeah, there is well, there is one other player mm-hmm. that has won a golden boot who has played fullback. Mm-hmm. It's Thomas Mackinson, and he needs to be in the conversation. He does best player in the world according to bunch of palms um we could yeah we could just we could just leave it there <laughs> yeah that's all yeah. you really need to say yeah. isn't you've, it you've you've got a uh a uh multiple choice question you've got an unlimited salary cap and you need to buy the best fullback you can possibly get for your team and here are your choices yeah. tedesco two of us are ponga mackinson Ooh. well we should put that up as a poll see how it goes I can do that on my website. In fact, we should do that on Twitter. Like, can yeah. you do that on your Twitter right now? Because I think that's important. Actually, you know what we should do? We should put it on the Twitter account for, um, you know, Burger the podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll put, it, we'll I'll just... put it on there after the episode. Okay, okay. And we'll both retweet it and we'll see what the punters come up with. Um, be an interesting one. Yeah. Be really interesting. Um, so, yeah. Okay. What's the, what's the next question? Right. Next question is, do you think it's fair that six of the last Game 3 State of Origin matches, excluding this year, have been held at Suncorp? It's a huge advantage, in my opinion. Um, it, it, it's, everything's, everything's planned before the series starts. I don't, mm. I don't know what he's alluding to. That's, I just find that stupid. Um, if you want to win the series, you've got to win it at some, some venue away from your home ground because they only get one home game you know, pretty much every year these days. Yeah, yeah. You've got to win one away from home somewhere. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, I mean, I guess they can probably mix it up a little bit more. But, 
you know. Who cares? Fucking just be good enough to win the fucking game. I'm exactly. sick of needing all of these excuses. Oh, this team's not playing great. Oh, who's the referee? It's like, win the fucking game. Be good enough to be a champion and not need to fucking rely on everyone handing you shit. Maybe God the... Uh, the... Maybe the uh, the alternative idea is to have one game in Hobart, one in Darwin, and one in Ugh. one in uh, Wembley Stadium. I know, yeah. It's like, oh, let's we need to, and then you have a pommy ref or something. Fuck, <laughs> pisses pom- me off. Actually, what they could do is have a a Scottish ref and a French yeah. ref. That would be good. Oh, imagine having a French ref instead of Origin these days. <laughs> it would be fucking crazy. And it needs to be a French ref who can't speak English. Yeah. And a Scottish and... ref who's had a few beers. Not drunk, mm. but he's just had a few beers to loosen up because, yeah, um, yeah. listen to a drunk Scotsman one day. Try and tell yeah. me what they're saying. Yeah, uh, fantastic. Like, like listening to Jamie Peacock talk. Um, okay, I've got one that we'll just have as a comment without reply. Uh, and it was from, let me just see, because I've got to scroll up a little bit here. That, well, their, their Twitter name is Fire, 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 and a thumbs up. That's literally their, their Twitter name. Um, ask Canty, how much did you donate to Izzy, to the Izzy Cash Cow? Or like me, were you going to match what God donates? I thought <laughs> we should just put that one in there, considering what's happening in the news. Ah uh, yes, well, God, God's Assembly, the Australian Christian, whatever the hell they are, have decided they're going to do Izzy's fundraising now that uh, mm. GoFundMe have pulled his, pulled it down and re- refunded all the money that was donated to him there. So uh, it's now in the hand of the church. Yeah, uh, that'll work well. <laughs> um, what are the chances of Queensland sounding out Cameron Smith to play Game 3 and the chances of him accepting? I'd say the chances of them sounding him out are probably 100% and the chances of him accepting are zero. Yes, I would agree. Uh, Cameron Smith, and uh, there's this, this is the thing, they all love State of Origin, but do you reckon Cameron Smith wants to go out there and lose a fucking series? You know, the big thing, oh, Cameron Smith come back and they still lost. Then He doesn't need that on his resume. He's done everything. It, how many more games do they want to? And the thing that the thing that gets me about this, if Cameron Smith comes back, I've got to update my website, and I don't want to do that. Look, the <laughs> the bigger problem here is um, Queenslander. This year was the year where they said, "Right, we need to move on from that golden period." Yeah, they bring back Cameron Smith and they win the series. Yeah, what happens next year? Yeah, they're, like, they're back to square who you, one, really. Who are you picking as hooker next year? And if it's Ben Hunt, how does he have the confidence to get the job done knowing that some 39-year-old bloke's going to come in and, and finish the job that he started? Yeah, exactly. And so they've they've made their bed. They've, and that is, part of the bed making has been made for them by the fact that um, the, their stars have just got too old and they're, they're starting to retire. Mm-hmm. And no, I, it's it would be stupid of them to go and ask him but I wouldn't be surprised if they do um, because they've got to be focusing on, on now and moving forward, not trying to hang on to the glory days of four, three or four years ago. Here's a question for you, Andrew. You're, you're Queensland, right? If you win game three this year, and we, we've looked through the Queensland side, it's, there's some older players that they still rely on pretty heavily, right? If you're Queensland and you win game three, Next year, you still got to do a little bit of a rebuild job, right? Yeah. If you lose, you've also got a rebuild job, but it probably gives you a, a license to throw in a few more players and, and get rid of some of the older players. But how, what do you think about Queensland looking towards next year? I mean, I I worry about them a little bit. They The big problem we found this year is... I think we discussed it in another episode, is their depth is abysmally low. Yeah, it's you know, shocking. Considering how much success they had for that long period of time, they coasted through that and did very little to, to you know, build more um, depth within the, the Queensland comp there. Mm. And it's part of the reason why they need another team up there to try and help grow their, their playing stocks for Origin. Um, 
But yeah, it's surprising to see that after all these years of origin, and they do have the upper hand as far as historical records go, that they mm-hmm. haven't been able to improve on their player depth there. And this yeah. year's really alarming how low it is, especially in the forwards. Yeah, and like you were showing me a, uh, on, I think it was the QRL website, where they list all of the players that are eligible to play for Queensland in State of Origin. And it's it's very, very, very short. And yeah. I was absolutely flabbergasted when I saw it to the point where if the NRL come out and they put in some sort of quota for Queensland based teams that they had to have a certain number of Queenslanders in their sides, I would not object to it at all. Like that's how bad it is. Yeah. It's and the problem with the, the amount of players that got eligible. A lot of them are 18 year olds or they're fringe first graders at best. Yeah. Um, so it's, I don't know what they're going to do there. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a worry for them looking ahead. And they're lucky in that they've got some positions where they're absolutely sorted. And I'm thinking about like 5'8 with Munster. They don't have to worry about that. Ponger is obviously a special talent. They don't have to worry about that. you got like a, a professional like Morgan, who's fantastic, like very, very special play to be able to call upon that can play so many different positions and play halfback if you needed him to very well. Um, but yeah, they 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 have some issues that they need to sort out with depth and the Queensland Rugby League for all of that success. And they had the they had the perfect successful run. They really should have turned it into, um, you know, not just a one generation thing, a many generation thing. And and you got to wonder what they were doing with all the money they must have made out of Origin because it obviously wasn't in building that player pool up. It wasn't in building depth in talent because it's it's terrible. Yes. Now, uh, I just got a, uh, a comment on Twitter. Yeah. Which is going to lead us to something else here. Okay. It's from someone called Cinnamon. It says... O-M-G. Hey, it says, hey, Freaky, how hungry are you? <laughs> Let me look this up. So is this on uh, the Fergo and the Freak one? No, it's... Uh, or is it you... tagged oh, both of us in? Yeah, yeah, you're in it. Okay, let me have a look here. It's live. Hang on. What is it not? I'm not because, seeing it. Uh, because... I think, um, I think I've got a quality filter on my Twitter, hey? Okay. Let's see if it's tagged into here. Oh, there so, we go, Cinnamon. <laughs> so, in the live show... Yeah. Um, if you haven't, if you didn't watch it, and if you haven't listened to the episode yet, because it is up there for you to listen to, um, we we did we did talk about donuts, and I, I just I um, mentioned my displeasure for cinnamon on donuts, and Freaky made a, a a really really let's say brilliant joke about cinnamon, and where we'll go in there, mm-hmm. and we've since had uh, I believe we've had an email. Okay, yeah, and I'm bringing up the email. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Here we go. I'm just bringing it up now because my email logged me out. And I need I need to stress that he's refused to tell me what this email is about, so uh, I'm fairly certain I'm about to get stitched up here. Well, the email was sent to me. It wasn't sent yeah, to you. It was sent right. to me. Okay, let's see how long it takes you to queue me on this one. G'day, League Freak. I was listening to your recent ramble on Origin 2, and I had no idea that Andrew didn't like cinnamon. It must have been very cleverly disguised with tomato sauce if it was ever presented to him because after the spaghetti bolognese incident, which we don't talk about, no one objected to the food. Hmm. Who would have sent that? Oh, that's your mum. Your mum sent me that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So what's the uh, spaghetti bolognese incident that we don't ever talk about? Wow. Um, okay. When I was about, oh, geez, I'm guessing here, probably five years old. Yes. yes. Um, I think Mum had had a bad day, and she yes. made everyone spaghetti. Mum, Mum's a good cook. Um, and for some reason, I was just being a shit. I just didn't want to eat it. And uh, Mum grabbed the bowl and flung it across the kitchen, yes. and it hit hit the front of the sink. I yes. still remember the dent it left on the sink. Oh, jeez. Bowl shattered, the spaghetti went on the floor, and she left the house and drove off. Oh, really? 
And I sat there crying. Oh, oh my God, Mom, come back. She went <laughs> up to her, her, her sister um, lived nearby. Yeah. And for, I, I gather she just drove up there and had a chat up there for about half an hour and then come back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love spaghetti bolognese now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's eaten weekly in my house. Nice. It is so yeah. good. Hey? Um, nothing like a bit of mental trauma to get your message across. I know. Fantastic. Hey? <laughs> you just like destroyed. You just a, a little, just a little bit. Even after all these years. That's the thing about women, man. They'll bring some shit up. Um, she had oh, some, I've, was a, I've never forgotten it. It was fantastic. Yeah, that was fantastic. She said, anyway. My newest thing that might create some fun thinking about how you would compare players or teams to cars. And she said, uh, Sam Thiday would be a great Leyland P76. Big, not real fast bugger to handle. Embarrassing. <laughs> the Bulldogs would be a Ford Falcon. Crappy usually lives in the dodgy end of town with crappy paint job. <laughs> uh, Datsun, Alfie Langer. Brought in the 70s, and it still goes at least once a week. <laughs> VW, Cameron Smith, old, bit rusty in spots, but a goer. Uh, and she said, so give these a thought. Okay, she I've said, got one. Okay, yeah. Um, Mitch Moses, a Deliveroo push bike. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally it delivers what it needs to, but sometimes it's a little bit late. Yeah, you could have... Uh, and you've got to pay a bit more for what's inside it too because it's been delivered. Tommy Trebojevic would be like an Alfa Romeo. Looks yeah. really, really good. Very rarely works. Yeah, constantly breaking down. Yeah, yeah, always breaking down. Who else have we got? Um, uh, man. This is the thing. She had time to think about this. We're, we're yeah. on the spot about this. Right. Anyway, she, she said uh, she gave us some names like she said uh, Tirana, Monaro, Ford Laser, Valiant. My mum had a Valiant. It was beautiful. Jeep. My, my mum had a Monaro. The oh, old, really? The old HJ Monaro. Oh, yeah. You were telling me about that. I mean, they you had to go to the server and fill it up with uranium. <laughs> <laughs> Those things went like stink. Yeah. Oh man. Um, Jeep, and then she put in brackets. Um, just sounds like a Kiwi. Uh, Kia, Porsche, Benz, Rolls Royce, Mini, Commodore. Who would be a Mini? A Mini. Who would be a Mini in today's game? Uh, who's the smallest player? You know what? I'd probably go with um, who was who's that? Uh, over in England, Hooker. Over oh, there. Rob Burrow. Yeah, and he's yeah. he's also still keeps going like a Mini does too. Yeah, yeah. He's tiny. Yeah, good. He is tiny. He's so small. That's crazy. Um, who else would it? So, I don't know. Who would be a Jeep? So, a Jeep, it's got, you know, who... Hmm, well, a Jeep, I'd, I'd go Adam with, Blair. say... I'd say Adam oh, Blair. Okay, because no. it's got some name recognition, but it's a fucking hunk of shit. <laughs> I'd, I'd go with, um, I don't know. Who's in a lot of ads? In a lot of ads? That's a yeah, good question. Because that's what the Jeep is. It's in a lot of ads, but not really in a lot of garages. <laughs> Do you know, I had my car break down once halfway between Sydney and Canberra. And I, I pulled it, it. What had happened is it started overheating. The thermostat fucking died on it when I stopped for Maccas at Exeter. And uh, I pulled into the road about a kilometre up from the Maccas um, into a, a vineyard. And uh, I hung out there. Anyway, I had to get a tow all the way back from fucking Exeter up to Sydney. Um, and I was talking to the to the tow truck driver uh, as we were coming up to Sydney, and I said, "What are some of the cars that you would that you pick up a lot, and what are some of the cars you never pick up?" And he said, "The cars I very ever rarely pick up are the old Hyundai's." He said, "They they're just little tanks. They go forever." said he brought his daughter one of them. He said the cars he picks up mostly, without question, all the time, are Jeeps. He was like, it is overwhelmingly Jeeps. <laughs> they break down all the time. He said, I would not go near a Jeep. So there you go. I don't think we'll be getting Jeep as a sponsor. No. But if they want to, you're always welcome. Yeah. I reckon, um, a va- you know what? Valiant, Orange Valiant, Tommy Rodonigus. Yeah, well, I'm now thinking after that story you just said there that maybe those old Hyundai's could be Paul Gallon. 
Yeah, it just keeps... Oh, I don't know. A little tank that just keeps going. Maybe if it had a supercharger added to it illegally, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Not going uh, there. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? A Porsche. It would be a Porsche, just like... You know who'd be a Porsche? Cooper Cronk. I was thinking Andrew Johns, because all, oh, en- yeah. all the engines in the back end. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, you know who else could have been a Porsche? Wendell Saylor. Wendell Saylor. His, yeah, the engine was in the back end of Wendell yeah. Saylor, too. Nathan, Nathan Highmarsh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd have to have a uh, Nathan Highmarsh. It'd be a, like a Porsche but with a crack in the cylinder head, something like yeah. that, you know? Nice. I'd have Daily Cherry engines, uh, Daily Cherry Evans as a Merc. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. you never see a Merc get dirty. <laughs> but they're worth a shit ton of money. That's hilarious. Oh, man, that's good. <laughs> what else could we have? Um, who would be a Tirana? I was just thinking Tirana. Yeah, who would be a Tirana? I, I feel think like it needs to be someone a bit, a bit leery. Really? See, I was yeah. thinking, you yeah, know, you're right. It'd have to be someone a bit leery. You're right. Maybe, um, maybe Campbell Gillard. Oh, you reckon? Yeah. I don't know. It, I don't know. I feel like it needs to be someone that's not as big as him, huh? Hey? Oh, that's true, too. Uh, small, mm. small and leery. Maybe um, Dylan Walker. <laughs> it was only good for a few years too. Yeah, yeah. Who would be a Commodore? Oh, just a Commodore like um. Ooh. I don't know. What's what sort of Commodore are we looking at? There's there's so many different ones. Yeah, that's true. That's we true. Could, we could have Lockyer as say like a VK. Yeah. Because you still see VKs getting around today. You do, don't you? Yeah. Mm. Man, this is a good question. (laughs) Any other cars that jump out? Like, who would be a Mustang right now? Like, the new Mustang? Uh... Like, you'd be looking at maybe Addo car. Yeah, although, because they're a muscle car, I'd be thinking more along the lines of uh, Cameron Munster. Cameron or, Munster. I was thinking a bigger bloke like Tomalolo. Um, oh, see, I, okay, Tomalolo is the biggest one. Okay, so Tomalolo, damn. You know, he's just, you know I, was, I was thinking a muscle car for Tomalolo, like a big, grunty, powerful freaking thing. Just a, it's got a massive donk. Yeah, like it's good, you know, maybe pumps out like, maybe a Veyron, but with, well, the Veyron's pretty fast. That could be Addo car. Yeah, what about, uh, Tomalolo would be like a, um, It'd be like a a, a top fuel truck. <laughs> like that's what it would be. It'd be like what was that truck called? I think it was called the Baghdad Bullet. Uh, <laughs> do you remember that truck? No, no, that sounds fantastic yeah. though. Yeah, it's it was this uh, drag racing truck. I don't, it's probably still around. Actually, and, now that I think about it, I think Tormalala would be just be a tiger tank. Just a. Fucking tank. You're not, not a Tiger just, tank, an M1. Just, an M1. A, yeah, it just steamrolls over M1. things. And what it does is steamroll over. It just shoots it down with guns anyway and just yeah. it, it just destroys everything in its wake. Yeah, and uh, definitely an M1. He's an M1. Definitely, 100% an M1 yeah. tank. Um, oh, man, this is great. So you, you could have told me about this part of the email without giving away the rest of it, and we could have done a bit of research on it. See, I didn't want to give anything away. You know, I no, didn't that, want that, to... would, that would not have given anything away. Okay, all right. Maybe we can come up with that. Maybe we could. Um, <laughs> maybe we can have subjects like this from time to time, where you know we compare plays to things like fast food and mobile phones and um, just stuff like that. Yeah, Benny Elias is a Nokia. Was once really good, but completely irrelevant now. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh man, that's a good one. Okay. Go. Anyway, she says at, at the end of it, uh, I will be listening. Love the podcast and hope to get through them eventually. Hashtag I love my footy, and she signs off. Ferg's mum, and 
Her email address is... No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't give that out because the poor yeah. bugger lives in the bush and yeah. it takes her about a week to download each email. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do that, she'll use up all of her, her all of her internet usage just waiting for all the emails to download. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ferguson. Thanks, Mum. Uh, that was great. <laughs> That's great. She's, she's, got a mention in the, she's got a mention in two of the last three episodes now. Yeah, she's doing good. Do you reckon that she she like goes around town and she goes into town and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a big thing. Pretty bit famous. Of swag. Yeah. Bit of swag. Yeah, yeah I mean, That's she right. should. Do you reckon she, she goes in and says, can I have like a, can I have a kilo of sausages and just let me know I'm an influencer, you know, so on the house. Well, she... To start with, um, there's no butcher in the township where she grows up. Oh, really? So she, or where she lives, sorry. So she'd have to go on that near one-hour drive into Wagga. Okay. To see the butcher first and then do that. But you never know. She might do that. Who Don't they have a, a field name but after someone in Wagga? They used to have the Eric Weisel Oval, but it got knocked down for, I think, investment properties and units and shit. Oh, Nice. Yeah, I was I was not at all happy about that. I love that ground. So your mum might be the most famous person to come out of Wagga, I think. Well, because you've got to go by the the nearest like town, because yeah, you know what people are like. It, it does lead to a story about the uh, the Wikipedia page that yeah. exists for the tiny little village I come from, and I've got to I must stress that the population there is less than two hundred in the last yeah. census, um, considerably less than two hundred. That's yeah. how tiny it was. And I went on there several years ago and and, and added a, added a uh, an entry on there onto the main page saying that the most famous person to come out of there was myself. <laughs> <laughs> he gave myself a spiel on there, and they removed it. Ah, pricks! And I'd like to know who is it that's more famous than me that's come out of that tiny little town. I lived there for a long time. Do you, are you willing I'm to the say most, the name I'm the of most, this town? I'm the most famous person I know that came from there. Yeah. Uh, or I don't know what happened there, but uh, League, League Freak went and had a coffee. I think he got bored a bit hearing me talking about where I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's our first technical issue we've had. But look at us. I mean, we're producers. We're uh, mixes. editors. Mixers. Uh, what else is there? Te- uh, technical expert people. Yeah, uh, I, I know how to turn my computer on. Yeah. I Well, I waited until, you know. Skype it's kind of reconnected, so yeah, communication that, expert. Yeah, we'll blame Bill Gates for that one. Yeah. Damn it, Bill. Where's my compo? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> got to cost at least a billion. Yeah, just a billion. They reckon that if Bill Gates, I don't know if you've heard this before, Bill Gates earns so much money that if he dropped a $100 note, it is not worth his time to turn around and pick it up. That's that's both um, crazy and yep. not at all surprising. Yeah, yeah. These this is the sort of information that I know that cannot be monetized in any way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So let's do some. Let's do the wrap up part where we give yep. shout outs and stuff. Yep. Absolutely. You can you can get us going with some shout outs if you got something, mate. Okay. Well, first of all, we have this starting block where you should follow them, you drop the K at the end, you go on Twitter, put in the starting block, drop the K, listen to them, follow them, fantastic show. I love listening to it. I love it deeply and meaningfully, like within my soul. So that's one thing to do. Uh, We've got our biggest fans, Nadine, Arabella, Richard Cranium, although I think he changed his name recently, didn't he? I think he changed his name. But uh, no, no, surely not. I, I kind of hope not. Hey, I feel like maybe it was just his logo. No, it's still Richard Cranium. He just changed his Twitter logo thingy. So uh, yeah, um, so yeah. Hello, Richard. Um, we've got Bartram thirteen. Long time also got, follow. Also got Carsten Brummer. Yes, uh, he, he's um, he's towing the entirety of this podcast over in uh, Switzerland. Yeah. You can find him on Twitter at Swiss underscore cowboy underscore 78 over there in Carsten Brummerland. 
always like downloading and listening to our stuff and it's 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 incredible it's fantastic uh i want to be give a big shout out to to james smith from inside sport we love you man we yeah. love you yeah i was just going to quickly say about Carson Brummer. if you have a look at his um have a look at his profile yeah it says german born living in switzerland with the liver of a queenslander and i'd like to know why he has a Queenslander's liver. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, my guess is that <laughs> strapping Queensland. My guess is that he has liver disease from drinking so much alcohol. Forex. And the, yeah, and you know how <laughs> Queens they're all red. It's because their liver isn't working. That's what it is. It's like it's sun. There's some sun there, but they've got that blotchy, super red nose. It's like that's some liver damaged sun. Does that yeah, mean that... Rothfield's from Queensland? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you. Well, certainly burnt a few bridges today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've, uh, who have we pissed off? We've pissed off Queenslanders. We've pissed off anyone that's a journalist. Uh, we've pissed off anyone that owns a Jeep. Uh, <laughs> we've pissed off... Uh, well, we, found out that I, we found out that I pissed off my mum many years ago. Yeah, you pissed off your mum. Uh I'd say that we pissed off the palms, but who really cares? So yeah, we've we've done quite a quite a lot of damage this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and uh in a in a feeble way to get it back to rugby league. Not as much damage as Jason Tormalolo causes on a weekly performance for the Cowboys. Exactly. And I tell you what, if you're looking for the sort of Jason Tormalolo performance week in, week out, but you need it on a daily basis. There are two websites to follow. First of all, rugbyleagueproject.org. For all your statistics, everything statistically based, really should be the epicenter that is used for a number of places in rugby league. Um, and then you've got, for all your opinions. You've got, league to, go to, you've got to go to leaguefreak.com. Exactly. You go to um, leaguefreak.com. You get all of the good stuff there, all the juicy get- stuff. Get news, you get opinions, um, get access to this fantastic production. Yeah, you get polls. Yeah, I mean, what more could you want? It's interactive. The whole the whole process between the two of us, it's all interactive. It's all seamless too. It's like um, we get our team involved in that. We uh, have all of our interns working hard behind the scenes. Oh. And uh, it just comes together in just this production that is fantastic. Well, it sounds like one of your interns is asleep in the back there. Sound asleep. Absolutely sound asleep. Doc, so, your pay, uh, Mason. Yeah, good stuff, Mason. Damn it. It's, <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> he, he's looking at me with one eye, huh? You know when dogs look at He looks at me, right, when he's sleeping and you wake him up, complete disdain. Absolute, complete disdain. It's incredible. Like you asshole. Yeah, what, pretty what much. You for? Yeah, yeah. Why, do, why does everyone look at me like that at one point in their life? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, this has been a good end. It has been very yeah. good. All right, we'll uh, we'll we'll tune out. And we'll say say goodbye to everyone. And make sure you tune into all of the thirty-eight episodes prior to this one, and all of the God knows how many we're going to do after this. Yeah, um, thanks for listening, everyone, and good night, Cinnamon.